Welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be installing a NEMA L14-30. Now that is a 125 slash 240 volt receptacle. And the reason why I say slash is because it has the ability to pull bo both 120 volt power and 240 volt power because there is a neutral reference. So we're going to install this today and we're not going over how to actually pull the physical wire. We did that in a previous episode, um, but we're gonna actually show you how hook one of these things up. This is gonna be a very similar procedure to any 240 volt slash 120 volt receptacle. And let's get to it. As always, I like to go over tools you might need. Obviously you're gonna need lots of hand tools, you know, screwdriver, prefer insulated for working on electric. Um, you're gonna want some sort of wire stripper slash needle nose pliers or pliers of various sorts. This is kind of a multi. Probably going to want some side cutters in there, going to cut some stuff. Obviously, you're going to need that receptacle. This is a L14-30. You're going to need some electrical tape. Make sure you get the Scotch 3M brand. Don't cheap out. This stuff saves you. Um, you're going to need wire nuts. Uh, I like to use Wagos, but you can get away with these gray ones as well. You're gonna need a short length of 10 gauge because this is a 30 amp receptacle, so you need to match that with 30 amp wire, 30 amp rated wire, so 10 gauge. Non-contact voltage tester and a meter device of some sort. This is a Fluke T6 1000 Pro. I love this guy. You're gonna need a faceplate of some sort, and let's get to it. Before you put your hand in any box with wires in it, Make sure the power is turned off. So we're gonna go over to the circuit breaker, flip that in the off, off position, and then we're gonna actually test these wires to make sure that there is no electricity present. Um, I'm gonna to link to this video, my safety video, and this, uh, we're gonna do a brief rundown of how we check for power in this one. But check out that safety video, it helps a lot. So once you find your circuit breaker, go over to it, flip it into the off position, Mine's already off. Here is where your non-contact voltage tester comes into play. Turn it on, rub it on some clothing, make sure it works. Now touch. The reason why you rub it on clothing, by the way, is because it picks up static electricity. So it'll, it'll beep and turn red. Touch all the conductors. All right, should, it should be off. Rub it on some clothing again. After going through with your non-contact voltage tester, use your meter or tester. We'll do voltage AC, that's V with the squiggly line. And make sure you go from your grounds to your hots, your neutral, touch all the wires. Let's try the hot here. All right, we got no volts, so we know we can work in here safely. By this point, if you guys have been watching me, you know I'm a big fan of the jumper method when you have conductors coming in and conductors going out to additional parts of the circuit. And basically what the jumper method is, is instead of connecting one wire to the device and then having your other wire go to the device, you jumper them by going to a wire nut and then having a single conductor go to your device. And the methodology or the reasoning behind that is in case for some reason the tabs or something on your receptacle or device were to break, it doesn't make the rest of the circuit lose power. So to get started, get yourself a six inch or so, this one's probably more like eight inch long piece of spare Romex. This is 10 gauge because you know we have a 30 amp circuit breaker which as we know, you need to have 10 gauge go on 30 amp. And we have a 30 amp receptacle, so 10 gauge is ready for 30 amps. So pull the conductors out. And I usually like to start with my grounds. So just remove the cardboard. And when you get Wagos, we're gonna use Wagos for this video, just they're so much easier and I prefer them because they're just they're quick for the homeowner. It's it's the best solution. It's very easy or very hard to screw up, I should say. So for Wagos, 
what you're going to do, you have to make sure that they are rated for 10 gauge. So in my links, I'm going to include 10 gauge Wacos. They make them that are 12 gauge through like 24, but they also make a larger one that is the 10 gauge Wago. So make sure you get the 10 gauge Wago. So go ahead, get your Wago. I like to start with grounds. This one is the five, yeah, five conductor model. Attach it to my ground bonding jumper because I have a metal box. I need a ground bonding jumper. I gotta tighten that guy up too. You see how loose he is. We'll do that in a minute. Take my outgoing ground, which is the bare copper. Plug them in. Snap shut. Super easy. Take your copper ground. Bend it. Lift the leather up and slide it under. And then go to your 10 gauge solid hole on your strippers. Super simple. Lift the lever, lever up on your Wago. Sneak this one in there. Let me bend it. Now 10 gauge is a little stiffer, especially compared to here 12 or 14 gauge, which we've used in previous projects. There we go. Just like that, grounds are done. Now, the hard part, you gotta kinda shove it in there. It's stiff. Don't be afraid, you're not gonna hurt the wires, it just does take some effort to shove it in there. Now we're gonna have to go through and we're gonna do the same thing for our hots. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten my ground bonding jumper. There we go. Have a nice, strong connection. So, let's do neutral next. 10 gauge hole, strip it. Take my eight or six inch long piece, bend it, strip it. Probably strip a little much on that. There we go. Take my Wago. Another beautiful thing about Wagos is you can combine your, if you're in a situation where you have stranded and solid, it works really well for combining those. I'm not sponsored or anything by the way by Wago, it's just a good product. Now, jumper, one last one, we're gonna do our black, which is a hot leg. There's two hot legs in a 240 volt circuit. so. Coming in from our double pole breaker, double pole because the two poles coming into household voltage, single phase, they're 180 degrees out of phase. So the sine wave is literally 180 degrees out of phase. So you have 120 volts on this leg, 120 volts on this leg, and if you go across them, you get 240 volts AC. So because this guy is a 120 volt receptacle, and the receptacle down here, further down, I don't know if it's on camera or not, is also a 120 volt. We're going to have to keep 120 volts going down the line. But we don't need 240 volts, that's why there's only three wires this way. So this one's gonna land directly on the device that's going here, and the other ones are gonna be doing the jumper method. Hopefully that's pretty clear, makes sense. Gonna strip my black.
And if you're new to what I'm doing here, I recommend you go check out some of my other videos, especially the previous video in which I actually show how I got the 240 volt wires coming in, or 240 volt power, I should say, coming in. I actually ran the Romex, or ran the MC, I mean, into the box, opened up my panel box, installed the circuit breaker, so it might clear up what I'm doing here. Lastly, we're going to take our other hot. We're going to strip a little bit off of it. Let's strip a little bit more. Beautiful. Now let's go get our device. Now, as you can see, we have our white, black, red, green. So two hots, neutral, the ground. So now all we have to do is wire in our device. So on the back, we have green. Obviously that's ground. We have our two hots. Brass is hot. Brass colored screw is hot. Silver color screw is a neutral. So we're gonna land those guys, put it in the box, and then it's good. Now that we have our wires jumpered, we're just going to have to land onto the back of our device. And they're color coded so you know, and they're labeled so you know. There's even a strip gauge on here so you know how much you have to strip. We don't have to do like the hook around the screw method. They actually have little plates here. You can hear them jiggling. So the strip wire is just gonna go behind there. I like to start with my ground, which goes behind the green colored screw. Just stick it behind, tighten it down. That plate simply sandwiches and compresses down tight behind that wire. Take your black, one of your hots, go behind a brass colored screw. Doesn't matter which one. Tighten it down. That'll get simply sandwiched behind that plate just like how the ground was. Now, I'll take my neutral. This goes behind the silver color screw. Just simply tighten it down again, just like the others. Make sure these guys are tightened really snug. You don't want any loose connections, especially with a 240 volt 30 amp circuit. I mean, as you go up in size and power, you know, sparking, arcing becomes scarier. So make sure you have a nice firm connection. Last but not least, let's do our other hot. And we'll stick this guy behind the other brass colored screw. You have two brass colored screws, one silver screw. Tighten it down, good and snug. Beautiful. Here we've landed everything. You can see copper color, bare copper is going to our green ground screw. Black going to brass and it's jumpered obviously incoming power outgoing power up here we have our other hot which makes 240 volts between here and here so that's going to that other brass colored screw then there's our white going to our silver screw also jumpered going to the other circuit now make sure you put electrical tape on there because these on the side, you know, if something touches that, you, or a person touches that, right, they'll get electrocuted. So make sure we cover that up. And we'll put a face plate on here. Well, we'll actually take this face plate and put it on here, and then I'll just put a blank plate on here. That'll still have power, but that's what we'll do. Now that we got this guy wired up, take your 3M Super 88 electrical tape. Don't get cheapo brand electrical tape. Buy the good stuff, wrap it around the sides, cover up those screws. You don't want anything getting behind there. You don't want any fingers getting behind there. You dust, debris, all that stuff. Cover it up. Cool.
just like that. A lot safer now. Now all we have to do is shove it in the box. We're going to steal the faceplate off of this guy. I'm going to put a blank on, but I'll do that off camera. And we'll take this faceplate, put it on here, shove everything in the box, and we'll be good to go. Got the faceplate off. Actually just ended up putting a blank on here, took it, removed the old receptacle, but everything is still jumpered wired to here. So we'll be able to test that later. Anyways, faceplate simply actually has screws that screw into the receptacle itself. Now the hardest part of all, the whole project, trying to shove all these solid wires stranded 10 gauge is a lot easier to move, but don't worry, you're not going to hurt anything. They just take a little persuasion, that's all. Now that we've wired this guy up, Let's go turn the circuit breaker back on and test for voltage. Go over to your circuit breaker, turn it to the on position. Didn't trip, that's always a good sign. Now that we've energized it and the breaker did not trip, we simply have to go through and test for voltage. So from this point to this point, there should be 240 volts. This point to ground, 120. This point to ground, 120. This point to neutral, we should have 120, this point to neutral, 120. So take your multimeter or tester, turn it onto voltage AC, put your leads in. It's a little tricky to get in that position. So my box is actually grounded, so I have 120 volts from that hot. Let's see if I can put that on camera. It's a little better. Hundred twenty, roughly, roughly one hundred twenty again. If I go phase to phase, I should get two hundred forty almost. And you can see the voltage is actually a little low in my area, which means the windings on my transformer outside have to be changed. But that's a supply issue from my utility. So we have two hundred forty volts across, approximately. 120 approximately from the hot to neutral. Let's try the other hot to this neutral. Let's see if we can move it. There we go. We're wired up okay. Let's go test our online device and make sure we're still good. Here's the receptacle that we had in line. It's still wired up correctly, top and bottom. So we're good. That's gonna go ahead and conclude today's video. Make sure you always work safely. Check out some of my other videos and I show you how to do all sorts of different electrical projects. I have a really big passion for teaching and doing electrical projects. So I hope you guys can give me a like, a share, a comment, and even a subscribe. I really appreciate it as always. Um, I'm gonna include links to some of my other videos and especially my safety video. I really recommend you guys Check that out. Electricity is dangerous, and I hope that this could be a tool that you could use to learn how to work safer, and maybe this could be a career choice for you in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.